Welcome to the fifth, the sixth day of our 18th biannual convention, which we are running with the theme reconciliation and restoration. I would kindly invite you all to rise as we sing our theme song for this 18th biennial convention. Good morning, everyone. Good morning once again. Thank you. My name is Bizo. My name is Suke. Uh, I'm from PAU. PAU Atsa. Thank you. I would like to ask all of you to do me a favor. Raise your hand up like this. And put it on your mouth. And push it back. Thank you for the beautiful smiles. I would like to take this time, I am humble and privileged this morning uh, to stand here. Uh, this is my first time to attend uh, PNG Atsa 
convention have been leaders to student ministry since my secondary days, but I haven't attended PNG Atsa. And this is my first time to attend PNG Atsa and to take part in the program of PNG Atsa. Thank you very much. From far and near we come, from across the nation, different cultures we unite through PNG Atsa. That's the beauty about PNG Atsa. That has gathered us, the Papua New Guineans, students, educated, allies in Papua New Guinea. It is not our might, it is not by our strength that we have come this far. It is through God's grace. Throughout this week, we have been blessed with so many powerful messages from our powerful uh, guest preachers who have been with us, Dr. Lero Elisa and Dr. Lauren Polly, for the wonderful message that have been preached throughout this week, and I know we are blessed. This is the sixth day of our convention, and I know since we have been blessed throughout this week, we are going to be blessed again this morning. So firstly, I would like to take this time to welcome the heavenly hosts who are with us throughout this week uh, during our pre-convention. And throughout this week, I would like to welcome them. I know their presence is with us. And because of their presence, uh, presence of the heavenly host with us, we haven't faced any disturbances throughout this week. And we have enjoyed the message of the Lord. And we really appreciate the presence of the heavenly host who are with us throughout this week. Secondly, I would like to take this time to welcome those who are viewing, viewing the PNG Atsa Convention, Biennial Convention, uh, online. I would like to welcome you as well, those faithful ones who have been PNG Atsa throughout this week and has been blessed by the message. I would like to take this time to welcome you as well. And also would like to take this time to welcome uh, the beautiful audience sitting here. Taking, uh, thank you for making your commitment. You have uh, spent your time and effort to make uh, this program a successful, and I would like to thank each and every one of us sitting here. May we be blessed by the message. Also, I would like to thank the Sonoma faculty, staff, and students who have been here making the pl place ready for us to come and sit and listen to the word of the God. I would like to welcome you as well. I would like to welcome those surrounding uh, Sonoma, uh, you are not a visitor to this place, but uh, you have come to join us and listen to the words of the Lord. I would like to take this time to welcome you as well. Let's stay relaxed, sit back, and enjoy the message of the Lord that will be preached by the mouthpiece, uh, our guest speaker this morning, morning uh, Dr. Lauren Polly. I would like to call up the PAU students for our first song. Thank you. Before you think that you're too lost to say 
soul without prayer is death. Uh, Ellen G. White said, a soul without prayer is a dead soul. And I would like to ask all of you to bow and seek the Lord in prayer. Everlasting great God in heaven, you are so mighty and so powerful. O God, in Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, it says, The heavenly beams, they worship you 24 hours a day, every moment by moment by saying, What is the Lamb that who was, who is, and who is to come? Great God, you see our hearts, you see our thoughts. We are just a speck of dust in your eyes, Lord. Just like the filthy wreck in your eyes, Lord. We are not worthy and perfect to call on him, but we are so glad that Jesus has died for our sins. And so, this morning, Lord, we ask the Holy Spirit to be upon us, open our hearts and minds to be receptive to you at this morning. We pray that may you touch the lips of your messenger this morning once again to talk to us. We pray and commit our lives and the message this morning back to you, and this is our prayer we ask in your mighty name. Amen. Thank you. This is the last morning, and so I would like to welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Lauren Proni, this morning. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for the welcome. Thank you for the beautiful sound. There's no valley. There's no darkness. There's no sorrow that can separate us from God's grace. That's very true. Before we, I'd like to, I've entitled my study this morning, our study together is, Where are the other nine? And the passage I will look at is from Luke chapter 17. In this life journey with Jesus, we need to take note of everything. God has done and is doing for all of us. I remember, I have a friend at PAU. She would come into my office regularly just to share, discuss work-related issues. Sometimes she comes in, she said, just 10 minutes, she will go out of my office after one hour. But she's, she, she she used to come and talk to me about so many things. But one thing that is obvious is that she, the husband walk out of air and the young daughter, some, some 20 years ago. And she was telling me that from the day he walked out of them up to now for 20 years, she has been taking note of every single activity in her life. So she, she was telling me, I've got lots of journals in my house. Some of them are in my office. And she was telling me, I want to go and do do some uh, postgraduate studies. She wanted to go and do a master's and say, I will use this journal for my, the, the resources she will use from the journal to write up a master's dissertation or probably a doctoral dissertation. That's what she used to come and tell me. And I used to tell her, when you do that, let, let me know so I can be a supervisor, you know. So, you, you know, it's amazing how people can take note of everything in their lives. 
And this morning, I want us to be reminded that it's very important for us to take note of every single activity that God is doing in our lives. You know, I came to Sonoma again. And every time I walk, I, I drive into Sonoma or walk around Sonoma, there's so many things that run through my mind. I can, it brings back a lot of memories of this place. I walk into a colleague's office once at PAU, and two of us were chatting about some work-related issue. But in her office, she had a flower that was planted. And in the course of our discussions, he told, he told me, you know, I planted this when your late wife passed away. So every time he looks into that plant in his office, it reminds him of my late wife who passed away in 2016. There, this is a very unique thing. We need to find those space and ask yourself, what God has done for each one of us. If you don't take note of God's happening in our lives, you, 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 you might not stop to appreciate the goodness and all the things that God is doing for each one of us. And I'd like to challenge each one of us to do the same because Jesus is asking us the question, where are the other nine? If you have your Bible, let's open up to Luke chapter 17 and allow me to just run through, bring out maybe one or two points, and I can sit down this morning. I'd like to pick up from verse 11 all the way to verse 19. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem. It is Jesus going to Jerusalem. He passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men, who were lepers, who stood afar off, and they lifted up their voice, voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was ill, Return and with a loud voice glorified God. I just imagine what he, what he did. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. I read again. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, Returned with a loud voice, glorified God. And not only that he returned running, not only that he was shouting, but he fell down on his face at his feet. How do you fall down on your face at, your, at his feet? Maybe go to a place where he, he knelt on his feet, his face touching the feet of Jesus, and he started to appreciate Jesus for what he did for him. Giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. This is something else. This is a sermon on John, trying to talk Samaritan and the other nine who are probably Jews. So Jesus answered and said, Where are there not ten clans? But where are the nine? Were there not any found, any who found, were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. We need to get to a place where we need to appreciate. So like a few hours back, there were 10 lepers who were expecting something good from Jesus. The Bible tells me in verse 12, 
Verse 11, the Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem from Galilee. You would discover for those of us who have been to Bible land, Galilee is up north. And you have to travel down to Jerusalem. But it appears that Jesus found a road not walking through the, the territory of the Jews, not the Samaritan, but he took the middle road. So he's now entering a village. That's what the Bible tells me in verse 12 of Luke chapter 17. And as he was entering a village, there were 10 lep lepers who were not in the village because they were unclean. You can follow through with what Dr. Leroy said last night of Naaman. They were unclean, so they are not allowed to live in the village. So the place is outside the village. So probably they positioned themselves in, in, in a very unique spot. So in the event that people are walking in or out, they can ask for some food. They can ask for some water. Maybe ask for some love as well. But this time it was Jesus who was walking into the village. And from afar off, they shouted to Jesus, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They wanted some love. They wanted healing at the time. And always, Jesus, always a nice person, he stopped. And he told them in verse 14, go show yourself to the priest. As they went, they were cleansed. I don't know. I'm not a good English student or even teacher. But the Bible tells me, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. I don't know. They actually went to the temple to see the priest. Or as they are walking, they experience that cleansing that they requested from Jesus Christ. With Jesus, you don't have to go and see the priest. You just move and you are well. So here we see. So this is a very exciting thing. But the good thing about this story is one of them, after he, experiencing, he experienced cleansing, in verse 15, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. He returned shouting, glorifying the God of heaven. And not only that he shouted, but he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. This is something that we need to take note. Samaritans are disregarded, maybe. They are considered second-class citizens. They were, they were not regarded as special by the Jews. But this one person, when he received healing, he came running back to Jesus, fell at his feet, and he gave thanks to God for what he has done for him. Maybe that should be a lesson to each one of us. Many of us are living, we call ourselves PNG Atsa. We are Seventh-day Adventist young people. And because of all, the fact that we are Adventists and we are seeing so much of what God is doing for us, we take life for granted that we don't stop to praise and appreciate God for what he's doing for each one of us. Am I saying it right here? You know? when, I don't, when I, if my father is a working class person and I'm a student at Woodall, you just text your parents, and then they just go to mobile banking, and in a few minutes, there's money in your account. And instead of going to class, you quickly catch a bus and go down to Kokopo. And you forget that you are there to study, you know. So if you need something, you just text, and your parents just send you the money again next week, the following week. 
And because you are receiving all of these things, sometimes you don't get to appreciate what your parents are doing for you. Or even what God is doing for us, you know. But if you are someone that your parents are in the village somewhere, in one of the remotest islands in Manus, you know, And what your parents eat every morning is sago. For lunch, they eat sago. And for dinner, we eat sago. And if I'm from Agen, I go to Manus. I will say, why are these people eating this thing? We should be eating taro and cocoa and all these things. And if my parents in this remote island in Manus are only eating sago fish in the morning, sago fish lunch, sago fish. You go to Lorengau town, you only eat sago there and came, come back again. You know, and then because you can, you, you, if your parents can afford to get some money, they will only send you 20 kina in July. And then come December, they will have some money to send you money for your tickets, you know. For that student whose parents can afford anything but just 20 kina for six months. But because they love their son or daughter so much that they wanted them own, they can maybe look around for some money and send you a ticket. I think that student will appreciate very much what he or she is receiving from her parents. But if I'm that one person where every day, every second day, I ask money and money is transferred to my account, sometimes we get to a place that we don't get to appreciate what we are receiving. Now we can understand the Samaritan. He was looked down by the Jews, by the Israelites, but when he experienced healing, he came back thanking God because what he received from Jesus that day was something that he thought would never happen to him his entire life. We need to get to a place that we must thank Jesus for what he has done for each one of us. We were talking re reconciliation. We were talking restoration. We were actually, those two words, we are actually talking about Jesus on the cross dying for our salvation. And sometimes we take it for granted that salvation is so cheap and we don't get to appreciate the fact that Jesus gave his entire life so each one of us can walk Papua New Guinea, walk this planet that with hope beyond everything that is happening to each one of us. We need to get into the praise mode. We need to get into the thanksgiving mode to appreciate what Christ has done for us on the cross and he will continue to do for each one of us. A sinner came. Jesus went into a house a woman came from the back and anointed the feet of Jesus. The Pharisee whom Jesus was invited to dine with that evening came and told Jesus, why are you associating with this sinner, this woman? The word sinner carries very negative connotation. When people refer to a woman as sinner, if you go to Luke 15, you will find that they refer to tax collectors and sinner. So if you are wom a woman and they refer to you as a sinner, you are not like a thief. When they call you a sinner, it carries the message that you are someone that you, you use yourself to gratify other people and in exchange for some money.
Jesus got up and turned to the Pharisee, and this is what he said. Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the air of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, as sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, for she loved much, but to whom little is given, the same loves little. Jesus, in verse 17 to 19, told this man, the Samaritan, and Jesus said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. What do you say? I read again verse 19, and Jesus said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. In verse 14, of Luke chapter 17, that 10 lepers are cleansed as they left Jesus trying to go look for the priest. And if you are cleansed, why is it that Jesus is saying in verse 19, and Jesus said, arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. There appear to be a repetition. Am I right or are you are looking at? So Jesus am kirap na talking to Moses. Time am kirap am talking to Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. In verse fourteen, Jesus said, "Go show yourself to the priest." And as they went, they were cleansed. But in verse nineteen, Jesus is telling the Samaritan man, "Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well." In verse 14, the ten lepers are cleansed. And verse 19, Jesus said, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. I'd like to ask a question and probably sit down this morning. Is it possible that in appreciating, thanking Jesus for what he did for him, the Samaritan received cleansing and wellness all at the same time? Is it the whole portion of God's blessing? When you get to a place that you thank God and appreciate him for all that he's doing for each one of us. Think him, huh? We live in a world where people want to get only, huh? Old man by ringing me, it is. Some in a work at and blow where work finish and me blow on man's side of phone number. That's also a side of phone number. All my ring, I think. That's what now phone and one name, all call a WhatsApp. All by WhatsApp is thinking, you got phone now, WhatsApp him so you can. So, man got WhatsApp too, they can communicate to you anyhow. How can Facebook, you know, good blood public to us or by message to me, you think? People are walking to her. So, you know, and people can sometimes, they will ask you for things, for you to give them things. One of the time, people are like, they were going to do some ministry, and the people ask if I can write something on Facebook and see people can help, but the Facebook was from among our own group. When I write, these people are trying to do some ministries, can we help them with some fuel or, you know, things like that. No one responded. But there were so many educated people who were part of this Facebook group. So I want to think that maybe many of us in this world, we are getting to a space 
that we want only. Oh. And once you get, they don't come back and say thank you, you know. But the story this morning reminds each one of us that maybe we need to look, look at the question that Jesus asked us again. Where are the other nine? You know? I remember talking to ten people, but where are the other nine? And if majority doesn't come, is that an indication that we live in a world where people get but don't get to appreciate the giver? Is it possible? Is it sinful? I'd like to suggest to each one of us that maybe we should allow the God of heaven to ask that question again, where are the other nine? You came to PNG Acha to reconcile and restore. Maybe there's 200, 300 people that came. But where are the others who are not here this morning? Is it possible that we are getting to a place that we don't want to appreciate the God of heaven anymore because we already got what we wanted? First Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 to 18. These are my favorite Bible verses. Even I have it on my email as well. If I send you an email, you will find this in my email. I don't call. The, I, I don't know what they say. Is it signature? <laughs> I don't know. And here it says, "Rejoice always." Let's read together. Rejoice, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I have all the reason to thank God. Because this morning I am standing and I'm alive, you know. I have all the reasons to thank God because I can be assured this morning that I have Jesus has saved me. And I'm assured of my salvation. But there's a lot more things that we can be thankful for this morning. We are going to finish and we are going to go out and do so many things. And this is probably my last time to preach to us this morning. But the message I'd like to leave with all of us is this. We talk about reconciliation. We talk about restoration. If you have made the decision for Jesus, you already have it. And we praise God for that. But go away today wanting to praise God and continue to praise him for all that will happen to each one of us. The lady, I said, my friend, she came and talked to me about all these things. I, we started this, uh, the Bible study worship in my house every Friday evening. I said it yesterday morning. She comes there with, the, with, with her family, with her daughter. And in our last time together before we close and we, we decide to go for holiday, she was, we said, okay, anyone want to share your story? She got up and said a story. After seeing all that God, all that she went through, all the valleys, the darkness, the sorrow, she got up and said, but now I can speak that God's grace has taken me this far, and I want to thank God for everything. Wow. Maybe we should conclude our worship this morning with a wow and appreciation for what God has done for each one of us. God bless you.
just one and more. No, some would send this on the shore. He sees every sparrow that falls. He made the mountains and the seas. He's in control of everything. Both creatures, straight and small. He knows my name. Every step that I take. Every move that I make. Every tear that Thank you for the sound. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you know our names, our individual names, even before we were brought forth into this world. You know exactly what to do with each one of us this morning. If we are to call out to you for healing, like the ten lepers, you know exactly what to tell us. You know exactly what to give us in return. And that is healing. But Father, please give us the heart of the Samaritan. Once we receive healing, instead of running off, Enjoying this life, he came back, knelt at the feet of Jesus. With a muddied face, he thanked God for the healing. Father, I just want to pray and ask 
for your special blessing on every one of us that are gathered here this morning. I understand we have families from Sonoma campus that are here, lecturers, faculty, and support staff, the children, the spouses. I'd like to pray, Father, in a very special way for each one of them. Give them the heart to praise God during this festive period. I'd like to also pray for PNG Atsa, all the students that are here. I'd like to thank you, Lord, that you were able to provide for the means, the money so that they can travel by boat, by air, even drive to this place so that we can experience reconciliation and restoration with Christ. Father, I pray that you can give them the heart to thank Jesus for all that you have done to us. Break down our pride walls that wants to make us better than Christ himself. Please help us to stoop low at your feet and thank you for all that you have done for us. I'd like to pray for the patron of PNG Atza. His wife, we thank you for all the outgoing leaders, Mr. Mark, Linus, the treasurer, the assistant, everyone that has put their thoughts, their resources together to make this program a blessed one. Thank you, Lord, for the leadership. PNG Asta is better because of their contribution in the last two years, and we continue to pray for each one of them. Some of them will probably graduate from where they are and move on into the public life, the corporate life in Papua New Guinea. I'd like to pray for them as well. Some of us, this would be our last year, given that we have graduated from, from various universities and college, colleges in Papua New Guinea. Some of us are probably entering our leadership role for the first time. I'd like to pray for them too in a very special way. Give us the heart of Jesus that we can lead, we can serve, and make PNG Arts a better as we Jesus increase and we decrease everywhere. Father, we are now going into the mode of preparation for Sabbath. Our students will go to Kokopo and re represent Jesus as they march and remind everyone that we are soldiers, children for Jesus, jewels for God's kingdom. I pray that you be with them as they go and make Jesus known to the public. And in the cause of everything that we do, help us to stop again tonight in worship each celebration for our salvation, the grace that has made us who we are. Father, if we have failed you, we ask for forgiveness, but give us the heart to celebrate our salvation your grace and our hope this morning in Jesus name we pray amen Good morning once again from Sonoma, uh, and we have only one word for that, wow. Uh, we've come to the end of our morning worships, and we'd also like to thank you for joining us every morning. 
we'd like to ask you to join us once again for the final uh, night worship for tonight uh, so that we will all be blessed. And don't forget to share the page, PNG Atsa, on your groups, your Facebook groups, and with your friends. And we will be going offline uh, in a few minutes. But don't forget, 6.45 PM tonight, join us for the uh, night worship with Dr. Leroy. Before that, please pray for the students who have decided to be baptized tomorrow. And today, we'd also like to ask you to make a special prayer for all the students here who will be making a Bible match in Kokopo Town. And so pray for them so that uh, everything will go smoothly. And also, uh, they may, the students may upload uh, small pictures of the match on Facebook or uh, in their groups. So what's that? It will be very interesting what uh, the people, citizens at Kokopo will react to this special group of students who will be marching for Jesus today. And so they will be marching today. We'd also like you to support Jesus today by sharing these messages. Until then, join us tonight. It's uh, goodbye from Sonoma until tonight. God bless you all.